Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and in this video, we're going to look at Kaboom JS versus Phaser 3. And we're going to do that by looking at three game features or mechanics that we can do in Kaboom JS and in Phaser 3. But before we start, if you enjoy our videos, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos on making games with Kaboom JS or Phaser 3. Now let's look at those three examples. We're gonna look at space shooting, exploding blocks, and A star pathfinding. Now again, we're gonna look at all of these using Phaser 3 and Kaboom JS. Now let's get started by looking at space shooting. Now on the left side here, we have the Phaser 3 version where the arrow keys move your spaceship and the space bar fires bullets. And on the right side, we have the Kaboom JS version, which functions about the same. The arrow keys will move your ship and then the space bar will fire bullets. Now they look and function basically the same, but the code is a little different, so let's give that a look. So here we're looking at the Phaser 3 code for our space shooting scene. It is a class in Phaser, and this is just general scene setup, and then we're gonna load our assets here. We're gonna create our ship right here. Now Phaser comes with a arcade physics system, and that's what we're using here. And in our update, we're going to check for input and then thrust if the up key is down. Uh, set acceleration to zero when there is no up key pressed. Rotate our ship if left and right is pressed. And then fire a bullet when the space key is just pressed. Now in thrust, we get the facing direction of the ship and then the set acceleration function is built into phaser three. And then the fire bullet, it's very similar. We get a facing direction. Then we put the bullet in front of the ship, set the velocity, and then it just moves forward. Now let's look at how this compares to Kaboom JS. Here we have a Kaboom JS scene, and it's just a function as you see here. And we add our spaceship here using the add function and passing in a bunch of components that we think make up this spaceship, including sprite so that we have a image that we can render it with, a position, and a bunch of other things here. But the two key things is the shooter and the thrust components. Now, for the rotating of our ship in Kaboom JS, we just need to check if our left or right keys are pressed and then uh, subtract or add five degrees to the angle in either direction. Let's look at that thrust component to see how we can move the ship. So where Phaser had the built-in physics of arcade physics, we have to kind of write our own here. And that's what we're doing here. We're applying our own acceleration after we figure out the facing direction of our ship. And we're doing that here with angle to VEC2. Now for firing a bullet, let's come up here to the shooter component. And what we're doing is getting the same facing direction as a vector, placing our bullet in front of the ship and then moving it along with our bullet component. You'll see in Kaboom that we have make a lot more components so that we can separate some of our logic a little easier and reuse it. So here in our bullet component, we are creating a velocity vec2 and then applying it ourselves to move our bullet in the direction it was going, just like we did in Phaser. Now let's look at exploding blocks. On the left here, we're exploding blocks in Phaser 3. And then on the right here, we're exploding blocks in Kaboom JS. You see that they also look very similar. We've got a crate and then we explode it by hitting it from the bottom. So then we have an effect here where different pieces of the box break off. So while they look and function about the same, the code is again a little bit different. Let's take a look. Here we are again in a Phaser 3 scene. Down here in Preload, we're loading our assets. Here in Create, we're making a simple ground that you saw in the demo before. And what's important to note here, or the difference, is our colliders. We're adding colliders to know when we've actually hit the box. Now what happens when we hit the box is handled in Handle Break Box. And in this method, we're gonna make sure that the alien's head is touching the box before we break it. If the alien's bottom, foot, or side arms is touching the box, we don't really want that box to break. This box will only break when we hit it with our heads. Then add some particles to have that explode animation. We're using Phaser 3's built-in particle system to do just that. Now, to handle jumping, Arcade Physics comes built in with setting velocity like we've talked about already before, and we can do that right here by setting velocity y to minus 500. Now let's see how we can do a similar thing in Kaboom.js. Here we are in a Kaboom.js scene. Now here we're creating a simple floor like we did in Phaser 3. Now for our alien, you see this is also similar to what we did with our spaceship. One thing to note here is this alien tag. And down here, we're making the box in a similar way and using the breakable box tag. We're using these tags so that we can know when they collide with each other. 
So let's come down here and we're going to do alien.collide to check for collisions with breakable box. And we're going to use side here to detect which side of our alien actually collided with that box. Now, if it is not the top, we're not going to do anything just like the phaser 3 example. And if we do want to break the box, we're going to create this particle effect, but there is no built-in particle system in Kaboom.js just yet. So we're going to make a component here called explode that's going to create five different objects and we're going to create them using the same composable component system that'll simulate the same exact particle effect you saw in the phaser 3 example. Now for jumping here in key press space alien.grounded checks that you're touching the ground and then alien.jump will jump your alien. All right, now let's look at A-star pathfinding. On the left is our phaser three version. You see both look basically the same. On the right is the Kaboom version. And wherever we click, our character is gonna automatically walk there by avoiding the walls and taking into account different costs of the walkable grass tiles. You can see that they look the same and they work basically the same, but the code again is a little bit different. Let's take a look. And we're back in another phaser three scene. So this should all look fairly familiar to you by now. Well, to note is we're using EasyStar. That's EasyStar.js. It's a library to help us with A star pathfinding. Now for some setup here, we're loading sprite sheets for our top down character and the various animations, plus the actual tiles that we're using right here. And here we're setting up the level. So now this thing is massive, but this is just to set up a level with an array of array of numbers. We're gonna skip most of this. This is just setting up the level, making our tile maps here. Then we're gonna set up Easy Star, give it the tiles that we can walk on, different costs, and what tiles we can't walk on. Now how the actual path finding works is here in our input. When we click somewhere, we are going to tell Easy Star, given the starting place of our character, the destination we wanna be at, called Calculate. It's gonna give us a path of all the tiles we should go around or go through. And then in Update here, that's how we're gonna determine movement based on that path given. So this is a big class. Let's see how this looks in Kaboom.js with just functions. We are again in a Kaboom.js scene. This is our A star scene. Now here in this add level, we're giving it a level as string. Now this may look a little bit weird. If you're familiar with Kaboom.js, you know that we normally pass in a array of strings, which is what level as string is. But we're actually creating it from a array of array of numbers because that's what Easy Star uses. Now in our Phaser 3 version, that is also the format that Phaser 3 uses, so we didn't have to do any conversion. So we set up our level here, and then we convert it right here by joining all of our individual array of numbers into a string, and then we get a result of an array of strings. That way we can have one source of truth for what our level actually looks like and not have to duplicate our level definition twice. In our level adding, we're just setting our tile symbol and then what sprite we should make here. Now we load our atlas over here in index. Here we're loading our character here and creating the animations, our walk and idle animations. And then above it here, we're loading our tile sheet Here's our tiles and we specify for each type where that tile is in our tile sheet. So back here in our scene, we are gonna create our character down here. And then here we create easy star, give it the level and then set the acceptable tiles, the grass it can walk on and then different costs for different tiles. Now, just like our phaser three example, when we click somewhere on our level, we're gonna get the destination that we wanna to go to and the starting position based on where our character is. Then we pass that information to Easy Star, call calculate. Easy Star gives us back an array of points, which is gonna be our path. And in determined movement, we're gonna use that information to know where, which tile to go to next. And then below that for our actual characters, movement and, and animation, we do that here where we set the animation and the direction that it should move in. All right, that's it for comparing our three examples, space shooting, exploding block, and a star pathfinding in Phaser 3 and Kaboom JS. Now these are both great libraries for you to make the game you want on the web. Thanks for watching.